age of the universe. Today, scientists can confidently say that the universe is 13.8 billion years old, with an uncertainty of less than 1%. But how do we know the actual age of the universe? Well, we have two methods for it. First of all, we have Hubble's law. Hubble's law states that the rate at which a particular galaxy is moving away from us is directly proportional to its distance. This means galaxies that are farther away from us are moving faster. If this expansion continues, there will be a time when we will no longer see those galaxies because the rate of expansion will be faster than the speed of light and their light will never reach us. By calculating the rate of expansion based on their distance, Hubble estimated how long ago galaxies started moving apart. Initially, Hubble underestimated the distance of galaxies he was observing and figured that the universe was about 2 billion years old. Today, we know his calculations were way off. The second method involves measuring the age of the oldest stars in the universe. The very first stars in the universe were formed from the clouds of gas about 150 to 200 million years after the Big Bang. Suppose we can point our telescopes toward the oldest stars and measure their exact age. In that case, we can also get a rough estimate of the universe's age. This method is a bit more complex because it's not easy to find a star that old. Most stars die out within their first 10 billion years, depending on their mass. A star like our Sun can live up to 10 billion years, whereas a star 20 times its size can only live about 10 million years. Even if we can find the star, it's not easy to precisely measure their age. For example, the oldest star we've found in the universe is the Methuselah star, or HD 140283. Scientists have estimated its age to be 13.7 billion years, with an uncertainty of 700 million years. If the Methuselah star is younger than the age of the universe, that's fine. But the uncertainty says that it can be as old as 14.4 billion years. There was a time when the steady-state theory seemed to have all the answers to our questions concerning the universe's origin. But, as we looked deeper, our understanding changed. Naturally, the Big Bang theory replaced the steady-state theory. For decades, the Big Bang theory has been on the front line of our exploration. How long before you think another theory, or a better version of this theory, comes to light? Well, even today, we have theories that are challenging, or at least adding something meaningful, to the Big Bang model, such as the eternal inflation theory and the oscillating universe theory. In a way, the eternal inflation theory is the extension of what the Big Bang theory states. Eternal inflation theory suggests that our universe went through a rapid expansion for a brief period called inflation after the Big Bang. This inflation did not stop even after a few billion years after the Big Bang, and it never will. The inflation will go on for an infinite period or as long as the universe exists. Today, we can observe this inflation in the form of the expanding universe. On the other hand, the oscillating universe theory is a bit complicated. Let's suppose you have a spring in your hand. When you stretch the spring and release it, it oscillates. According to this theory, our universe is going through an endless series of stretches and contractions. The universe begins with the Big Bang and starts expanding, just like the spring. Once it has reached the maximum possible extension, the force of gravity that takes over the universe begins contracting. Eventually, it gets to the point of singularity and bang! A new universe from the older universe begins, and the cycle follows. Steady state theory is a theory of the mid-1900s that has been ruled out by our current understanding of science. Even though eternal inflation theory and oscillating universe theory still hold their position among scientists, neither of these theories, 
is as successful as the Big Bang. <laughs>